This is the coding, first coding video for Sprite Smash. Uh, in this one, we're just going to go over the uh, initial engine that drives this. So I'm going to come over to Blocks. Oh, I got a piece of code I need to get rid of there. And the first thing I'm going to do is just in, uh, initialize my variables. And the variable that I'm going to start with is just simply points. I'm going to set my points equal to zero. And I'm going to come here to procedure, and I need to set a procedure for my image sprite. So it's that image sprite that I'm going to run. Uh, this is going to be my engine that drives it. Uh, so what I'm going to do for this is come to my image sprite sprite, and I'm going to set my image sprites X and Y. So I'm going to just duplicate this block. And I'm going to change it to X and Y. Now, what I want to do is have it choose a random point on the screen to appear, both on the X axis and on the Y. So I'm going to bring this in and we'll duplicate. But my problem is my screen works as a, as a layout, like a grid, like we're thinking of graph paper. So I could literally have my sprite appear at the end of my graph paper so it wouldn't be on the screen. So what I need to do is come to my canvas and I need to get my canvas's width. So I'm gonna get my canvas's width for my x-axis and I'm gonna get my canvas's width for my y-axis or for my height for the y-axis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract that from my image sprites, Let's see if we can get that in there. Let's change it first. Uh, image sprites width, there we go, duplicate. And my image sprites height. What this is gonna ensure is that my they're gonna choose a random integer from here to the width of my canvas minus the width of my image sprite and same with the height so that it will always appear on screen. So I'm going to come over to my clock here and I'm going to call this procedure my image sprite procedure to run. So if I flip over to my emulator we can now see that it's choosing a random uh, integer for my xy from one to the width of the canvas minus the width and height of my image sprite, which makes it appear on screen instead of only a portion of it on the screen. So the next thing we can get into is a little bit of the gameplay. So when my image sprite is, uh, is touched, here we go. So when my image sprite is touched, well, what do I wanna have happen? I wanna set my variable for global points to getting my global points plus one. So again, I'm gonna add on to that variable so I can store that there. So I'm gonna get, get my global points and then I need a math block to add one. The next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to display that. So I'm gonna set that points label that I have So the text of that label to display what my variable is. So if we take a look now, I'm gonna come over to my emulator. As I click on my uh, little koala bear, I get a point as it continues to jump around. So the next thing that we can talk about is, one of the things we wanted to do is make our gameplay a little bit harder. So I'm gonna to go to my uh, clock here, and I'm gonna set my clock interval. And what I'm gonna do is come up to my math block, I'm gonna grab my division block, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that clock one's interval, And I'm going to divide it by 1.05. So what happens is, every time I click on that sprite now, the interval starts at 1,000 milliseconds. So it's dividing by 1.05. So I'm basically